Hi, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with this uh, really cost or you know over assessing overtime uh, cost uh, server resource. I could apply it anywhere. Uh, this is kind of a follow up video of a previous video I made on how to deal with, for example, if you have stuff that are waiting in the input buffer when the store goes off ship. So you can reference that video to kind of see how I solved it. Uh, remember, that's one approach of many that you can do. That I said to set up a few add-on processes to deal with that. So if I run this right now, um, things show up. So you know, the store goes on shift at 0 0.5 hours. And at 5.5, you'll notice that um, the store goes off shift. And these add-on, these modern things that are in the input buffer, they finish getting processed, Okay, which is, which is what we want. Okay. So everything works properly and now it's off shift, right? Um, one thing I've added here from the previous video is that I've added a secondary second source, which also you know uh, outputs the same customer. Uh, I just wanted to make this a lot easier. So I just created a second source. And this, this starts creating entities after a day, 24 hours later. And it has the same logic, interval arrival time of 10 minutes. And it stops after basically 5.5 hours, okay? So I have two, Two, um, two days worth of um, customers arriving to a store. Okay. The question is, how do I assess a uh, cost? Okay. So if you look on the store server, there's these finance. There's a financial section inside. Um, capital cost. You can kind of read the description on these. There's a one-time cost. There's also a buffer. If there's things that are waiting in the buffer, you can assess a cost as well. If you're only assessing costs for basically things getting processed, like ending the process queue, only thing you have to look at then is the resource costs. And if there's no setup costs or one-time costs, then you're really only looking at the idle costs and the usage costs here, okay? There's no cost, per, if there's no cost per use, it's also zero. Um, what I'm gonna assume here is that, you know, basically there's a $20 per hour charge, okay, for using the server right now, okay, it's $20, okay? So, uh, when I run this, you know, for five hours, for example, the total cost should be 20 times five, 100. I do that twice, then it's 20 times five, 100 times two, $200, right? Okay. Um, so right now, um, the total cost should be $200 if there is no overtime, right? If there's no overtime wage, okay? But right now I've set it up so that, you know, things get, things finish processing, even though it's off shift. If you go into data, um, you see the cost multipliers here, they're all one. Okay, so it's gonna be slightly above the $200, right? Because things run more than the five hours because there's things that are you know, waiting in the input buffer once the shift ends for the store, right? So I'm gonna fast forward this, go to results. And then you notice the total cost is $220, right? So there's roughly $20 that are assessed after the sh uh, shifts end for a server. Okay, so this, those are your overtime costs. Uh, what I want to check is, okay, so, you know, in reality, you're not going to actually pay $20 extra, right? The overtime costs more. There's usually a 50% premium. So if there's, if the costs are now assessed at a 50% higher rate for just for those overtime hours, then it should be reflected on this total cost, right? Um, and the way I've uh, uh, you know, built this, it's very easy to use. I don't really have to touch anything. Um, because I'm utilizing this resource cost um, options within the server, you can do this for a resource as well. All I have to do is go to the data table under work schedule. I just have to change the cost multiplier value. So right now it's set to one. So it's going to look at whatever that rate is down here, multiplied by that value. Okay. So for if it's more overtime, I want to change that cost multiplier to 1.5. Okay. So now what we should see is this 220 turned to 230, right? Because the extra is $20, 50% higher, it'd be $30. So let's fast forward. And as you expected, now it's 230, okay? So see what happens now if we change it to two. So you, you pay the double rate if there's overtime, okay? So let's uh, rerun it and let's see what the results, 240, right? So automatically you're assessing the overtime cost. Now, how do I want to just calculate that the overtime as a line item? That's very simple, right? All you have to do is create an output statistic, right? And you subtract out whatever that value is at the end, subtract it out the, because the other costs are deterministic, right? I said that it was $20. We, we know it's $20. It operates for 10 hours, right? Five hours each day. So you subtract out $200, 
then we know the overtime cost is $40. So you can use a state variable, you can use alpha statistic, different ways to do it, right? But the key thing is if we utilize this built-in functions inside the server for the cost, it makes it a lot easier, especially if you're utilizing the work schedules, okay? So this is one way to approach that issue, okay? So hopefully this helps you. Uh, and look at, look at this example that I posted as well. Okay, take care, thanks for watching.